está fallando la máquina. Está fallando la máquina. What does that mean? La máquina, well that means the machine. Está fallando means it's messing up. The machine is messing up. Está fallando la máquina is a Spanish way to say that it's misfiring. This vehicle is misfiring. How can I tell? Three answers. I can feel it. It's got a little shake to it. I can see it. It's got a little shake to it. And I can read it. I can tell that I have a misfire by getting the code. The check engine light is on. Typically, when the engine is misfiring and you're driving down the road, the check engine light will flash. That's the most serious one of all the check engine light possibilities. The check engine light can come on and then go off and then come on and then later go off. That's not too serious. If the check engine light stays on, that's not too serious unless it's not running right. However, if the check engine light is blinking, that is more serious and something needs to be done pretty soon. My code reader tells me PO302. That means misfire on number two cylinder. Let's go figure out why number two is misfiring. Okay, folks, let's see if we can figure out what's wrong with number two cylinder. This engine cover on this particular one comes off real easy. Just snaps off here, here, and there. I'll just move it out of the way. Now, my code, PO302, tells me that it's number two cylinder. And I've, de I've decided that this one right here is our number two cylinder. So I'm going to first remove the coil. Everything is easy on this one. And it's a good demonstration so you can get the basics down. Now the coil is in this case is held in place by a 10 millimeter bolt. Okay, I'm gonna remove this bolt. Okay, I'll take the bolt out. Being careful not to drop it, lose the bolt. The bolt's gonna be important. So I'll put it somewhere secure. Now the coil, this is the ignition coil right here. We've had a video on how coils work, and I'll leave a link in the description so you can watch it if you want. Now, before I take out the spark plug, I'm going to check the coil because sometimes the coil is faulty. Now, also, there is another video on how to make and use a spark tester. So I'll leave another link in the description so you can learn to make and use your homemade spark tester. We take the homemade spark tester, we put it onto the ignition coil, and I have to ground this wire here. So I'm gonna ground it over here on some bare metal. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna start the engine and we're gonna look for that spark. Okay, folks, there it is. That's our high voltage spark. This tells me that the ignition coil is good and now it's time to go after the spark plug. We just tested the coil and it passed the test. If there was no spark at that spark tester, then I would switch the coils as in, in one of my other videos that I've already put a link in. This particular spark plugs, they come out real easy. So let me go ahead and take one out. Now it's always good to work on a cool engine that's not warmed up because it's just more comfortable and you prevent any damage to the threads. I would never take some kind of impact and whip those out of there. Then we remove the spark plug. Now this is a special spark plug socket that has a rubber boot on the inside in order to hold the spark plug. So now it's time to examine the spark plug. Oh no, we might have some major problems here. Let's show you what I see and that worries me. Just when I thought I've seen it all, something new. 
I've never seen this before. Let me make sure that you can see this. Come on down. When I first took this spark plug out and I looked at the gap, I got real worried. There is no gap. And usually when you don't have a gap, that means there's been a mechanical problem inside the engine that caused the side electrode to get smashed into the positive electrode. I started looking at it a little closer, the side negative electrode didn't look bent, and all of a sudden I realized, and I've never seen this before, the porcelain, the porcelain insulator that protects the center electrode from shorting out came loose. Like there, we actually have a normal gap. You see that? The gap is normal. But if, I do, but if I do that, the gap goes away because that ceramic porcelain insulator is flopping around there. This is what was causing the misfire on number two. Here's the new spark plug that we're going to put in. We're going to replace them all, might as well. Now, we want to look at the spark plug gap. Now I've noticed that that's a tiny, tiny little positive electrode. Whatever you do, don't put any pressure on that because it will shatter and you just wasted that spark plug. The most important thing that you can do after you've selected the spark plug is to look at the side negative electrode. It needs to be level. It doesn't need to be tilted either up or it doesn't need to be tilted down. If you take a measurement and the gap is not correct and you want to tilt this guy, it's the wrong spark plug. The negative electrode, also known as the side electrode, needs to be level. Now the spark plugs usually come pre-gapped, but you don't just throw them in there. You can take your measurement, but the most important thing is to make sure that this negative electrode is level not tilt it down and not tilt it up. Okay, let's put these spark plugs in. Well, this turned out to be an easy one. It was that faulty spark plug. It could have been a coil, a spark plug. It could have been a fuel injector. We didn't have to go that far. I'll leave a link in the description on another video that I have that causes the engine to crank and not run. Three things are needed to make an engine run. We need spark. Spark is a nickname for the secondary ignition voltage at the spark plug. That's that high, high voltage. The second thing we need for a cylinder to hit, combust, is the correct air-fuel mixture. That's where the injector comes in. And the third ingredient needed for that cylinder to combust is correct compression. In the very beginning, you heard compression. Now, compression can be measured. The spark can be tested and through a process of elimination if the spark is good and the compression is good and there's a misfire well it has to be the fuel injector okay what i did is i changed the spark plugs this one was a very easy one now let me tell you a little bit about the spark plugs boy they sure have gotten pricey i remember i could buy a spark plug for 99 cents Today, spark plugs, the cheapest one you can get is almost $9. I did some research. You have so many choices on the spark plugs. You can get the platinum, which it had to begin with. Now, I got, I don't want to say the cheapest one, but I got the least expensive one. Instead of spending $18, that's almost $20, four times, how much is that, two, four, six, $80 for four spark plugs? Forget it. The only time that I would do that if those spark plugs were very difficult to get to. What's the main difference between the expensive spark plug and the less expensive spark plug? The amount of time that is going to last. The platinum spark plug will last 
80,000 miles where the copper tip spark plug will last 30 or 40,000 miles. This particular engine was so easy to put the spark plugs in and it did fix the problem. I went ahead and put all four spark plugs in. It's not a good idea to put one spark plug in. So I chose the least expensive spark plugs and I put them in, I cleared the code and the engine is running good. Folks, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give us a thumbs up. If you learned something, tell us in the comments. The comments are very helpful for the YouTube algorithm to help promote my video. And the most important thing, I hope you had a little bit of fun. If you did, and if you haven't subscribed, please do so. Thank you again for the view and send those thumbs up and the comments. Keep them coming. Thank you.